They went overtime, they went right in overtime. The Yellow Jackets never led in either overtime, and Rock can get a pair of free throws with 1.9 seconds left to win it. 
Stevens in traffic. Knife into the basket was Beckford. She was off the mark, and now Nelson will run with it. She's got a clear path to the basket, and still it's a little over a minute gone by. Ty Oliver with it now, the standout from Cheyenne East. Boy, what a career she had down there, and was also Miss Basketball for the state of Wyoming. Been to a couple of colleges before landing at Rocky. Now the junior fires. She leads him in three-point attempts this season. She's jacked now 38 three-point attempts. She's only hit nine. Layup no good there, and here comes Giese. Defended by Oliver. I picks up her first foul. Number 13, Kyle Oliver. First foul of the game for either team. Goes. We approach the eight-minute mark here in the opening quarter between MSU Billings and Rocky Mountain College. Terrific crowd on hand tonight. Full of bad bear. Down low. This is tough to stop. She spins. That's about the only way you can force her to stop is if you force her to spin. Once she gets down low and twists right up to the basket, and it's easy off the glass. Bad bear leads the Yellow Jackets in scoring with about 18 points a game. Here comes Stevens. Up and nearly down. Yeah, she gritted her teeth there. Thought she might get called for the trap. Air kicks it out. They do a nice job here of switching up. Oliver drives to the basket. Finds Stevens. Good. Connor yeah, Bears on the board. Great pass from the baseline. Find the open look at the paints. Nice and easy. And we're not at a two. Two and a half minutes into this basketball game. Alterowitz Gymnasium here on the campus of MSU Billings, just a couple miles away from Rocky Mountain College. Nelson pops a three, it's off target. Now Oliver runs, gets it ahead. Gracie Leckfold. Rocky will set it up on offense. Again, no trouble going to the basket. They like to score. That was Oliver off the mark. Here comes Nelson, finds Boyce inside underneath. I think that was deflected by Stevens, who did a nice job to get back defensively. Yellow Jackets have started slowly multiple times this season, but uh, they find a way to they get cooked, and boy, they heat up and uh, look out. They trailed Alaska Fairbanks, or Anchorage, I should say, by 17 points. <laughs> Yellow Jackets trailed Anchorage 30 to 13 and came back to win by double digits. Quick two-point lead for the Yellow Jackets now as we're under six and a half to play here in the opening quarter. Deflect it off, Giese. Possession will stay with Rocky Mountain College as Chloe Williams, Natalie Andreas sub in. Kai Oliver inbounds. They give it back to her. Steven set the screen. Flash was open for a moment. Now it's Leckfold, survey, defended by Nelson, falls down at the free throw line. Excellent effort to get that out. Three-pointer, Butte, no good, Oliver. Stevens did get called for the travel that time, so the second turnover tonight for Rocky Mountain College. Tough looks from outside the arc so far. Obviously, neither team has cashed in. A couple of good looks, just not going from distance right now. Rocky just one of six shooting. The Yellow Jackets not much better at two of eight to start this game tonight. Natalie Andreas trying to change that. She showed off the front rim. And again, the Yellow Jackets played last night, so their legs not only as fresh as they would be. Williams took that three, was off the mark, so here they come. Rocky will set it back up. Inside the leading score. She kicks it back out. Played a two-person game. Kind of pulled the chair out from underneath it, did Nelson, and Courtney off and running now as the Yellow Jackets have numbers if they want. Easy. Deflected by Stevens and stolen away. Wes Keller says, let's take a quick timeout, settle things down as we approach the five minutes. 522 left here in the opening. Hey, don't forget that as you can pick up this week's game program out in the lobby. Filled with conference standings, upcoming schedules, and student athlete Q&As. Also available at 50. No, we don't have 50 different things. While you're out in the lobby, be sure to stop at the Exchange Clubs of Billing. The Exchange Clubs of Billings Beer Garden. The Beer Garden is open one hour before tip-off and closes after halftime of the second game.
two in a low scoring first quarter, Travis. It's been tough so far. Neither team, like we touched on, has been particularly good from three point range. And for the Jackets, once it gets going, it usually it starts cold and then it just heats up. Right now, definitely running cold. Let's see if they can change that. All right, all right. Oliver handles it up top now. Gives way to Morgan Baird. Defense by the Yellow Jackets. Oliver inside, deflected away. Boyce steals it. Here comes Aston Deasy. What an effort there by Boyce. She can do it all, Travis. She can score, she can deflect, she's got blocks. Leads the team, I believe, in assists as well. 15 on the shot clock. Plenty of time for the Yellow Jackets as we're under five minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Courtney Nelson uses the screen set by Boyce. Now down to five seconds on the shot clock. Andreas fires cross court. Two seconds. Got to get it off. Andreas does, and it will be a shot clock violation. So a nice defensive possession there for Rocky Mountain College. Full of bad bear in for the Jackets. Full of bad bear subbing back in for the Yellow Jackets. Andreas will sit. Deal inbounds to Stevens, who gets it right back to her. Kai Oliver Buell, actually, it's a sort of a hyphenated name, so if I call her Buell, my mistake, she's listed as Oliver on the roster. That one's deflected and nearly stolen away, jump ball. And possession will stay with Rocky Mountain College. Here comes Danny Zahn on the court for the first time tonight for MSUB. Still ice cold shooting both ways. Rocky just one of eight. MSU Billings two of 10. Matlin Bears, Gracie Leckvold fires and connects there. That three pointer's good for the lead. Something had to fall eventually for one of these two teams. I would expect with Cole Bad Bear on the floor, they're gonna work it down low here. She is extremely effective down low, no doubt about it. And good defense there as Williams was Forced to take a side step. Inside to Stevens. Backing down the, and tied up by Cola Bad Bear. Good defensive possession for the Yellow Jackets. They force another turnover. Kevin Wooden already subbing in several players, uh, trying to keep his lineup fresh. Again, after playing Montana Western last night. Caitlin Grossman now in, inbounds to Danny Zahn. That was three straight defensive possessions for the Jackets where they forced a turnover. Now it's Williams, deflected out of bounds and rejected by Kai Oliver. Possession will stay with the Yellow Jackets who trail by one, 324 left to play here in the opening quarter. Bad Bear bounces inside to Grossman. Soft touch. Off the rim and no good. Here we go the other way. Gracie Leckvold handling across the timeline for Rocky. Again, this Batman Bears team averaging 80 points a game, and there's their leading scorer rejected by Grossman. Here comes Zahn with it. Bad Bear ready to set a screen. Swings it around to Giese. Both teams looking for any sort of offense at this point. Low scoring first quarter. Bad Bear, she can hit that. Inside to Grossman. And foul on the floor. By Madeline Hegum. Here comes the, uh, Shayla Montague now for MSU Billings. The three point sharp shooter. We'll she, uh, see if she can get fired up. Bad Bear inbounds to Montague. Williams now finds Bad Bear inside. Pump fake, spin move good. Lead back to the Yellow Jackets, 6-5. They haven't put the points up on the scoreboard here in the gymnasium yet, so <laughs> we'll see if it comes down to a two-point game late. There they go. Oliver with it now on the give and go, finds Stevens. Defended by Grossman, now double teamed. Deflected away for a moment by Williams. 
Jumper in the lane goes. Kai Oliver. Yellow Jackets set up their half court offense. Under two minutes to play here in the opening quarter. There she is again. Bad Bear inside underneath. Reverses to a degree the foul call and she'll have an opportunity for the three point play, Travis. After such a cold start, each team has cashed in on their last two possessions. So starting cold, heating up. It's worth wondering if we, we touched on how good both teams are offensively, but defensively, I wonder if it's going to tend more that way tonight. Could very well. You know, early on it looks that way. Neither team in double figures as we only have less than two minutes left here in the opening quarter. Bad Bear has scored for the Jackets on their last two possessions. So she's reeled off five in a row. Oliver sets up the play, the head tap. Let's see what they bring, trailing 9-7 now. Bad Bear switches out, defending Kavanaugh. Gives it to Oliver over to Leckvold. Hard to the basket, hard off the backboard. And here come the Yellow Jackets. Not really with numbers, Giese. Dumps it outside to Nelson who drives in, off balance, floater, no good. Last touch by the Yellow Jackets. Minute 14 left here in the opening quarter. Again, about a half hour, uh, starting a half hour late tonight due to that men's game, the first one of the doubleheader. Went to double overtime, Rocky won by two. Pair of free throws with 1.9 seconds left. The difference in that one. Rocky's men sweep the Rimrock rivalry this season. Yellow Jacket women trying to do the same for MSUB. 10 now on the shot clock, Oliver. Bad Bear, switches, hand in her face, Oliver's three, off target. More great defense from the Jackets, forcing them down to that last second on the shot clock, not a good look. No, and she's not afraid to pull the trigger out there, Kai Oliver, she's got over 43 point attempts this season, hitting only nine. And here we go, about an eight second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Now they just shut the, yeah, they, they, it's game clock only. They've got 20 on the shot clock, but it's, it's standing still. So Rocky can play for the last shot of the quarter. Knifing to the basket, off target, no good. And Leckfold comes up limping. Montague nearly banks it in. But let's check on Gracie Leckfold as she heads back to the bench. All right, we're at the end of one quarter of play. Low scoring first quarter, nine to seven Yellow Jackets over Rocky Mountain College when we come back. The dash for cash, always entertaining. Travis, you were a student here. You said you never got the opportunity? No, never got the chance. I always wanted to try the half court shot. I never got the chance <laughs> for that either. I don't know which paid more, probably the half court shot, a semester of tuition maybe. Oh, that would so. that'd be fantastic. Rockies cross country team in the building tonight watching as they make their way by us here. We've got a national champion on that men's team. Won it just a couple weeks ago out in Washington. So a turnover there for the Yellow Jackets. 
Fallon Bears will keep possession as they inbound and set up the half court offense. Leckvold, by the way, Gracie Leckvold not on the court as they come out of that timeout. Looked like she may have twisted or tweaked something. She limped away as the quarter expired. And now Oliver seems to maybe have been poked in the eye there. She needs a moment to collect herself. Bailey Young will inbound for Rocky Mountain College. Still waiting on Oliver at the free throw line. She gives the nod and says, yep, let's go. Inbound to Stevens. Oh, could have been a charge. They're going to call a block on Courtney Nelson. And now a technical foul on Courtney Nelson. She came up pretty beside herself. It didn't look like she said anything, though. No, and there was a history between those two last night. Uh, Courtney was bringing it up here on the MSUB logo, got knocked down by the defender. He was out there watching right in front of it, gave her no call. Courtney then, her back was ridden across midcourt, still no call. And then moments later, that same official calls her for an offensive. So that was a bit bizarre last night. Continues here. I mean, she, she didn't look happy, but definitely didn't, didn't look like she said anything. I'm not sure if they're assessing a technical on the bench as well or instead. Either way, a low scoring opening quarter and now just 20, 31 seconds into the second quarter, nine to seven, Yellow Jackets with the lead. Oliver at the free throw line to shoot the technicals. First one up and good. And the officials are doing their best out there just like the players are as well. You wonder if they'll go back and review last night's game as well as tonight. Every game probably worth reviewing. Certainly. I mean, officials, they, of course, they take their job extremely seriously and you want to get as many calls as you can right and certainly never want to call to influence a game. So they've called a double technical foul here. She gets four free throws and hits them all. So from a two-point deficit to a two-point lead for Rocky Mountain College. And the Batland Bears keep possession as well. Dumped inside to Stevens. Off the glass. Tapped out of bounds. They say she, she wanted to call MSU Billings with possession, but changed her mind at the last moment. Correct call, I believe. Looked like Deani Boyce had a finger on it. I believe so. The crowd in here is getting a little restless off the technicals, too. Brenna Lindsay into the game, number 42 now for Rocky Mountain College, and another quick whistle. Boy, this is interesting. Again, Bad Bear had some body position on her, but didn't look like anything anything out of the ordinary. Aspen Giese's asking about it. Just saying, what can we do to not get a <laughs> whistle called against us? <laughs> uh, nonetheless, back to the free throw line goes Rocky Mountain College. Yellow Jackets already with five fouls. We're not even in the quarter. We're not even a minute into the quarter. That free throw from Stevens, no good. Well, we'll see if the, uh, if the whistles motivate the Yellow Jackets here. Stevens, second free throw, hard off the gla uh, back rim. Yellow Jackets come down with it, and the crowd says, all right, let's go. Zahn with it, up top, screen set by Montague. Her favorite shot, three-pointers up and good. Right on cue, they needed it. Lead back to the Yellow Jackets as we're now under nine minutes here before halftime. Saturday night college basketball at Alterowitz Gymnasium. Game two of a doubleheader. Men played first, Leckfold lets it fly. She's back into the game. 
That one bounced out of bounds by Colabad Bear. And the Batland Bears will keep possession. Inbound up top, Lindsay with it. Jump shot, Dominic Stevens hits from the elbow. And back and forth we go, 13-12, Rocky with the lead. Again, the first time they met over at the Fortin Center earlier this season. It was exhibition for both games. Rocky won it 80 to, uh, MSUB won it 80 to 65. Tough pass to Corral there. Deani Boyce did her best to handle it. Turnover for the Yellow Jackets and Rocky will take it the other way, trying to build on its lead. This one's just exhibition for Wes Keller and his team. It'll count in the standings for MSUB's women. Leckbold, defended by Giese. Bad Bear taps it away from Stevens inside. Goes outside, Leckbold lets it fly. That one's no good. Bad Bear collects it, and here come the Yellow Jackets, trailing by one. Long outlet to Danny Zahn into the paint. Cola, head fake, and they'll settle it down. Nearly deflected away there by Stevens. She is tall and long. Danny Zahn, jump shot in and out. Giese was there for the uh, re quick rebound, but a great deflection there and a block by Gracie Leckvold. Approaching seven minutes left here before halftime. Stevens backs down Bad Bear who taps it away and Zahn comes up with it. Pretty bounce pass inside. Danny Zahn finding Diani Boyce. And the Yellow Jackets regain the lead, Travis. Making it happen down low for the Jackets. We saw Shayla Montague hit it from outside, so it looks like they're heating up a little bit. They had that little flurry between the two sides in the first half. Cooled down a bit, now we're heating up again. Nearly tapped away, and Stevens was off target there. The Yellow Jackets come away with it. Back up court. Zahn, defended by Bailey Young. Montague, outside, Boyce, three, no. Stevens barely has to jump for that rebound. Dominic Stevens out of New Zealand, listed at six feet, three inches. Leckbold inside, muscling her way. Now it's Brenna Lindsay finds the roll. Sophomore from Billing Senior puts Rocky back on top, 15-14. Cola Bad Bear not defended. Three-pointer off the mark. I have a feeling she'll have that shot all night if she wants it. Stevens hasn't really gotten outside to defend that. She acknowledges it there. She taps her chest and says, that's on me. It, she'll sub out, maybe needs a breather. With how well this team shoots threes, I, I would not give them that look too many times. No, and the Yellow Jackets heat up, and they did in that first meeting at Rocky Mountain College. Yellow Jackets shot over six, uh, over 50% from three-point range. Brenna Lindsay at the free throw line. Second one coming. Exactly six minutes left here before halftime. Lindsay second, up and good. Nope, they're gonna wave it off. They say a lane violation. Basket no good. Rocky Mountain College still with zero team fouls here in the second quarter. Yellow Jackets already with five, so Rocky will be shooting the rest of the way. Tough situation for the Jackets. You have to defend, but another three. Yeah, there it is, Danny's on, and again, once they heat up from outside, look out. Yellow Jackets up by two, that's their largest lead of the night, as silly as it says to say that, uh, sounds to say that here early in the second quarter. Neither team's been able to run away yet. Leckville driving, and now they're gonna call a charge. Aspen Giese with a nice job to adjust her feet and stay in front of that one. Zahn will now bring it up court for the Yellow Jackets. Chloe Williams handling out to Boyce.
Ah, uh, Boyce was freed up for a moment there. Had the outside shot and then says, you know what, I'm going to take it inside. And does, draws the foul. Brennan Lindsay with her first of the night. So we're seeing that swing back a little bit. Obviously, the Jackets had four fouls in the first minute of the quarter. Now we're starting to see that swing back. So I feel like with officials, as long as it's even for both sides, that's that's what we can ask. Sure thing. Deani Boyce, first free throw up and in for the Yellow Jackets. Now it's Wes Keller working the officials. And that's what coaches do, right? That's what they do best of course. <laughs> a lot of times. Both free throws good for Deani Boyce and the Yellow Jackets now with a four-point margin. Approaching five minutes left here in the opening half. Here comes Oliver, hard to the basket, spinning inside, no good. Rebound Lindsay, no good. And the Jackets come away with it, Chloe Williams, and she'll push. Yellow Jackets haven't really got the inside game working yet either and when they do look out for that another three Danny's on Wes Keller wants a timeout wants to know where his team's defense is they continue to give up wide open three-point attempts and now it's starting to haunt them 434 left here before halftime 22 15 Yellow Jackets As we come out of the timeout, 4.34 left here in the opening half. Yellow Jackets lead it by seven. That's their largest of the night. Rocky held to just 15 points so far, averaging 80 on the season. They scored 65 in the first meeting between these two teams. Danny's on, defending Gracie Leckvold. Leckvold takes it to the basket and scores. Nice floater in the paint there. That snaps a scoring drought for Rocky. Zahn hassled at midcourt. Bad Bear posting up now, they find her. And head fake. Leads to a wide open three for Shayla Montague. Another open three for the Jackets. Again, you can't keep leaving it open, especially Montague, she's gonna drain that. No, had that fallen, Keller may have called another quick timeout. <laughs> I mean. Oliver inside. Leckvold for three, trying to make it five straight points for her. No. Deani Boyce comes away with the rebound, and the Yellow Jackets will settle it down. Under three and a half to play here in the opening half. Montague with it to Williams. Zahn crosses over, loses a handle as Leckbold steals it. We'll see what happens here. Pump fake and foul call. She draws the foul on Chloe Williams. So Leckbold heads to the free throw line. That was great back pressure from Williams. Picking up a foul, it's not ideal, but nothing but nothing between Leckbold and the basket but air in, in the other scenario there. You're right. You don't want to give up the wide open layoff if you, if you can help that. Neither team shooting well it continues just 23 percent for rocky 29 percent for the yellow jackets six of 26 field goals for rocky tonight in this one eight of 27 for the jackets 
Second one, no good, and here comes MSUB approaching the three-minute mark now. Giese, a wide-open three. Zero perimeter defense there for Rocky. They get away with it. Leckvold nearly tapped away. That one no good. Leckvold there for the rebound. As Morgan Baird was off target. Rocky will do its best to set it back up. Good defense by the Yellow Jackets. Ten on the shot clock. Leckvold driving. Again. Baby fade. Falls. Leckvold's really the one that's giving him trouble. She's got the last four points with that free, with those free throws as well, but they need to just settle it down in the paint. I think an issue with the shot clock, they've still got 30 seconds up there. We'll see if they adjust it. Nope, they're just gonna say, let's go. It's something we bumped into during the men's game as well. They did have shot clock issues in the men's game, so maybe some malfunctioning equipment. Chloe Williams, lefty layup all by herself. I think she was surprised at how open she was. And as we hit the two-minute mark here in the opening half, Gracie Leckvold brings it back up court. Baird sets the screen. Leckvold fires the three. And wow, I think she's got eight straight points now for the Batlin Bears, who've suddenly taken the lead. They've come to life offensively. They're cashing in some of those opportunities, and Cola Bad Bear does the same. That's what the Jackets want to get more into. You have to believe they can score at will down low oftentimes, especially with Stevens on the bench right now for Rocky. Without that 6-3 presence inside, the Yellow Jackets could go to that nearly every trip down court. Floater blocked by Deani Boyce. Last touch by the Yellow Jackets, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Danny Zahn will sub back into the game, giving Williams a breather. More clock issues. That clock at the far end of the floor was dead for about three seconds. Minute 16 to play in the opening half. Rocky Mountain College in white. Looking for an exhibition win tonight. This one counts for the Yellow Jackets. Oliver's off target, and the whistle blown here. This just the third team foul on Rocky Mountain College in the second quarter. Bailey Young, checks in for Bailey Young now checks in for the Batland Bears. After Leckville drew the foul there. Minute five left and counting. Zahn across midcourt. Bad Bear sets the screen, frees up Zahn. You'd think they'll go back inside to Bad Bear. Heather Hagum battling down low. Or Madeline Hagum, I should say. The Hagum family out of Winifred. They're all athletic up there, the Hagums in Winifred. Of course, Deani Boyce is from Winifred, too. She is. We've got a couple of them battling tonight. First free throw good for Bad Bear. She hits the second as well. Here comes Stevens for the final 48 seconds. Back onto the court for Rocky. Curious to see if they're going to try the same as the Jackets are doing with Bad Bear. Try to get Stevens some space down low. Morgan Baird's been basically ineffective tonight. She's their leading scorer this season. With almost 20 points a game, the Portland State transfer. It's number 33 battling down low. Deani Boyce defending. Stevens now with it. Freed up. Blocked. For a moment by Deani Boyce and then the late whistle. Said Deani got her on the head. So it'll be free throws for Dominic Stevens. Junior player from Hamilton High School. Not Hamilton in Montana, but Hamilton, New Zealand. A little bit further away. Yeah, averaging 13 points and nine rebounds a game, but more importantly, 24 assists for her this season. 
Rocky recruits New Zealand. There's two players on the men's team as well. Um, Kale Robinson is actually from the same high school as Dominique Stevens. And then... Second free throw up and good for Stevens. And that cuts the lead back to two Yellow Jackets with 20 seconds left in the half. Can play for the final shot should they choose. Oh, nearly over and back. Pressure full court works as the Batman Bears come away with it. Now they can play for the final shot. That one tapped away from Baird, and here comes Deani Boyce. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Baird twisting towards the court. Foul called. She had Bailey Young all twisted around. Eight tenths of a second left, and Deani Boyce will go to the free throw line for MSUB. Bad Bear leads them right now in scoring. She and Le uh, Gracie Leckfold each with 11 points for opposite teams. Deani Boyce can make it eight if she knocks these two down. Make it eight, take your team to the half with a four point lead. No good. Again, not a great shooting night for either team. Batland Bears at just 25% right now. MSUB at 30% for the first half. Boyce's second free throws up and good. So with eight seconds, eight tenths of a second left, it's just enough for a catch and shoot if they choose to and they do not. So we'll head to halftime. MSUB 27-24 over Rocky Mountain College. They'll take a 15 minute break, come back and decide who wins it.
Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to Altero. It's Gymnasium for some second half action as we get set to play. A minute left before we open the third quarter. And Travis, what do we have in the first half? Well, the first half, especially from beyond the arc, was not good for either team. Them and Rocky struggling as well. They're two for nine. Two for nine shooting. The Yellow Jackets are three for 12. So we'll see what changes in the second half. Yellow Jackets also with an opportunity to uh, take advantage down low, something they haven't done much of tonight. Down low, um, you got to take advantage of that. All right, so as we get set to start the second half here, it's 27-24 lead for MSU Billings. If you're just joining us, they did play earlier this season at the Fortin Center on the campus of Rocky Mountain College. Yellow Jackets won that 80-65. to Tonight's an exhibition for Rocky and Wes Keller's team, but it counts in the standings for MSUB's women, who are 9-2 this season, trying to run it to 10-2. Keller and his crew, a perfect 7-0 right now. By the way, they play this exhibition game tonight. They've been off for a couple weeks, haven't had any game action. And then on Tuesday, they go to Boise State. That's a heck of a dive into the deep end. Talking about Rocky Mountain College and over at Boise State, Maya Hansen playing, former Billings Central and then Billings Senior Transfer as Cola Bad Bear comes out and hits. The Yellow Jackets open the quarter with a quick jump shot there and a four point lead. They've led by as many as seven. There have been 12 lead changes in this game as Stevens kicks it out. Oliver for three. You figured she'd eventually heat up. And she does. Now two for eight shooting on the night, but her first three-pointer. Battling Bears now in a full-court press. Yellow Jackets clear it. Boyce back to Nelson. Aspen Giese and the Cola Bad Bear who was calling for it down low. She's defended by Stevens. Boyce. Had some down low pos position and then lost a handle. Stevens looks like she's thinking about a three. Instead, they'll get it down low and a quick foul call. There's Morgan Baird will go to the free throw line. Baird Rocky's leading scorer, but has been quiet tonight. She's 0 for 4 to this point. Her first free throw off target. And Portland State transfer averaging 19.7 a game. Bears as a team averaging 81 this season on their way to that 7-0 record. Coming off a trip to last year's Elite Eight. Cross court to Nelson. Bad Bear, defended by the 6-3 Stevens. Cola drives right in, normally tips, makes that shot, and she's there for the follow, maybe just padding her stats on that particular possession. Picks up the rebound and the basket. The size difference didn't look like it mattered there. She went up pretty easily, grabbed her own rebound, made it happen the second time. That I think that's a testament to how great of a player she is. She dominates down low. Some more shot clock trouble as they've halted the game for a moment here and try to reset things. Eight minutes, 27 seconds left in the third quarter. And now they get it up and running. Here we go. Batlin Bears with it, down by three. Again, largest lead for either team tonight has been seven for the Yellow Jackets. Now Stevens goes to work down low, defended by Bad Bear. Blocked by Bad Bear. Picked up by Nelson, and there's a whistle. Morgan Baird will be called for the foul there. Each team now with one foul in the third quarter. Here we go, approaching the eight minute mark. Giese looks inside to Bad Bear who was calling for it. 
Back outside, Giese can hit that and does. She lit him up the first time around. Aspen Giese, I believe, led uh, the Yellow Jackets in scoring when they played over at the Fortin Center on the way to that 15-point MSUB win. Stevens now outside. Gracie Leckbold handling now, drives to the basket, free throw line. Tipped away, gets her own rebound. Oliver not afraid to shoot that. One for four from three-point land tonight. Seven on the shot clock. Stevens fires the three. No good. Here come the Yellow Jackets with a six-point lead. Let's see what Kevin Wooden has drawn up here for a play. Natalie Andreas outside. They'll swing it back around. Set it up top. Giese now with it. Defended by Leckbold. Shayla Montague fadeaway is good. Largest lead of the night at eight for MSU Billings as we're under seven minutes to play in the third quarter. I like the thought. I had it at halftime that they needed a reset and they'll come out hot in the second half. They definitely have the Yellow Jackets. Yes, Travis, yes. And another turnover here. Deani Boyce checks back in. Natalie Andreas will sit down. Rockies only led this game for about four and a half minutes, but they've kept it tight throughout. Batland Bears have shot twice as many free throws, 14 to the Yellow Jackets, 7. 13 on the shot clock. Boyce fires, rebound, Bad Bear. Boyce inside, tied up, and a whistle. Non-shooting foul. They'll take it out of the baseline. Madeline Hagem checks back in. That was Oliver's second foul, by the way. Dominic Stevens subs out. Bad Bear with it up top. Now with Stevens out. We'll see what they go to work. The Yellow Jackets down low. They do. Deani Boyce inside. Whistle. She'll go to the free throw line. And that's two quick fouls on Kai Oliver. She's got three on the night. Three team fouls for Rocky. Boyce first free throw. No good. Again, the Yellow Jackets played last night. Montana Western beat them by 20 here at Alterowitz Gymnasium. So they're going back-to-back -back nights. Bears coming off two weeks rest before they head to Boise State. And then out to Chandler, Arizona for three games. Oliver with it to Leckvold. Baird defended by Bad Bear. Baird twisting, no good. Bad Bear, an effective job on defense tonight on Morgan Baird. She's just having a rough night, Morgan. Absolutely one point uh, to this point in the contest. For Rockies leading scorer. Giese, high arcing, three is good. Here come the Yellow Jackets in the third quarter. Heating up from outside, heating up from inside. It's all good right now. Wes Keller will take a timeout. His team averaging 81 points a game, stuck on 28 with 5.27 left here in the third. Yellow Jacket basketball teams are back in action here in Altera's gym after the holidays on January 11th at 5.15 at 7.30. Visit msubsports.com to get your tickets and to see the entire 2023-24 season schedule.
Welcome back to the YMCA, if you can hear the music in the background. Also known as Alterowitz Gymnasium on the campus of MSU Billings. The Rimrock rivalry between the Yellow Jackets and Rocky Mountain College. Yellow Jackets have come out on fire, so to speak, here in the third quarter, at least with authority outscoring Rocky 13-4 to thus point in the period. Leckvold. Now to Oliver. Baird trying to work for position inside. Defended by Caitlin Grossman. They get it inside to Baird. Spins off the glass. Left is good. It's her first field goal of the night. They've done a great job keeping her in check. Probably some uncharacter uncharacteristic misses on her part, but great job by that jacket defense. That would have been a tough three-point attempt for Giese. Smartly, she takes one dribble and pops the baseline jumper. Yellow Jackets back on top by 12, under five minutes left here in the third. Giese's been a problem to deal with in this third quarter. By my math, I think she's up to eight points. Oliver, short, three-point attempt. Deflected out of bounds, last touch by the Batman Bears. Chloe Williams and Cola Bad Bear will sub back in for the Yellow Jackets, and we've got a media timeout. So with 4.35 to play here on a Saturday night in the third quarter, Yellow Jackets lead by 12. Welcome back as the Yellow Jackets inbound in dark uniforms. Home team MSU Billings up by 12 over Rocky Mountain College. Batland Bears out of the media timeout, showing full court press. Cola Bag Bear drives to the lane, stripped by Le uh, Gracie Leckvold. Drawing triple coverage down low there. She sure was. Leckvold, fake, pump fake, baskets good. She's been the bright spot for Rocky tonight. Leads him with what, 13, 13 points? 13 points, yep. She's been, I mean, Kai Oliver, for all of her struggles from the field, she's up to nine. I think both teams are coming to life a little bit. Bad Bear now with it inside. Gets her own rebound and easily up and in again. Second time she's done that this quarter. Grabs her own rebound and gets a second chance to go. Cola Bad Bear leads everybody in scoring tonight with 17. She's averaging, I believe, 18 for the Yellow Jackets as their leading scorer this season. Deani Boyce right behind her. That was a nice cut to the basket by Oliver. Pretty passing too. Great passing, just the way you draw it up in practice. Bad Bear frees herself up inside. Boy, she's struggling with the, with the inside shots tonight and that is really unlike Cola. That, that first opportunity just, it, it's right there. It's just tight lid. Yellow Jackets lead by 10 with about three minutes to play. And here comes Morgan Baird with her second shot, her second field goal of the third quarter, second field goal of the night. Took her a while to get into the groove, but she's getting there now. Lead cut to eight. Bad Bear inside. That's what she typically does. Absolutely. Every time in this quarter, they bounced it down to her. She has so much time and space, and I just wonder if it's one of those where you're wow, so wide open. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kai Oliver brings it up court, finds Leckvold outside. 
Baird's calling for it inside, defended by Grossman. Baird backs her down, spins, rebounded by Danny Zahn. Yellow Jackets running, bounce pass. Tried to find Grossman there, but stolen away by Hegum. Here comes Oliver. Grossman got a piece of that one. Oliver will back it out to Leckvold, the wide open jump shot. That's good. Gracie Leckvold now with 15 points tonight to lead Rocky in scoring. The lead is eight for MSUB. That one nearly tipped away. Giese, Zahn, fadeaway jump shot. 10 points for Zahn. And a 10 point lead for the Yellow Jackets as we approach a minute 30 left here in the third quarter. Hagum with it, defended by Bad Bear. Zahn now guarding Oliver. She muscles her way to the basket, gets her own rebound. Giese deflects it. It's kept alive nicely by Angie Cavanaugh. Now Leckbold sets it back up. Baird calling for it. Felt she had position for a minute down low. Baird sets the screen and a foul called on Aspen Giese with six seconds left on the shot clock. Two great plays by Rocky, keeping it in on the baseline right there and then fighting through the coverage to, uh, to make a nice pass. Yes. It's a non-shooting foul. Two team fouls on the Yellow Jackets, just three on Rocky Mountain College. So a clean third quarter between the two teams as we're at a minute four left here. Oliver takes a seat. As do Zahn, Bad Bear, Grossman, and Giese for the battling, uh, or the Yellow Jackets. Under a minute to play here in the third. 10 point lead for the Yellow Jackets in dark uniforms. Deani Boyce. Defending Brennan Lindsay, who dribbles it out of bounds. Turnover for the Bears. Possession of the Yellow Jackets with 44.8 left in the third quarter. That's a handful of times now the Jackets have either forced them into a shot clock violation or a bad shot to avoid that violation. Yeah. Defense is great. Nelson outside with it. As Andreas doesn't hesitate. Batlin Bears come away with it. They can play for the final shot of the quarter. Shot clock's off. We're under 18, 17 seconds. Gracie Leckbold handling out front, defended by Chloe Williams. Switch, Boyce gets back nicely on defense. A deep three-pointer off the rim. And that'll do it. Time expiring on the third quarter. Rocky. Trailing by 10, 48-38, as we have one to play when we come back. Welcome back out of the timeout between periods. We've got one quarter to play here between MSU Billings and Rocky in the Rimrock rivalry. For all their struggles in the first half, the Jackets came out in the second shooting 64% from the field. 64%, wow. Bears just 14 of 46 shooting on the night. Yellow Jackets with only four more field goals. 18 of 44, but a 
Much better shooting percentage. Leckbold, step back three, no good. Brennan Lindsay's there to clean it up. That's no good. Rebound, Yellow Jackets. Deani Boyce comes away with it. Nelson across the timeline. Jackets working around. Boyce inside, defended nicely by Hagem. I don't think Boyce expected to see her there when she spun around so quickly. Brenna Lindsay trying to work inside on Natalie Andreas. Andreas with the rebound. Back the other way. Nelson driving and a whistle blow. Courtney Nelson will go to the free throw line for a pair. She's been quiet tonight offensively. Foul called on Taylor Black, her first of the night. First team foul on Rocky here in the fourth and final quarter. Nelson just one for three so far tonight from the field. First trip to the stripe, so chance to get up to four on the night. And the Yellow Jacket women, of course, are so deep. You know, they've got multiple scores as often as they'd like to, you know. And, and if Courtney's not scoring tonight, then Aspen Giese is. If Aspen's not, then Shayla Montague is. And Deani Boyce and Cola Bad Bear and down the line. 12-point lead for the Yellow Jackets, trying to improve their record to 10-2 and two this season. That one overthrown. Brennan Lindsay with a nice job to keep it alive, and they say she stepped on the line. So the Yellow Jackets will inbound. Shayla Montague to Aspen Giese. Hassled for a moment there near midcourt by Bailey Young. Now Bad Bear with it inside. Nelson out. Andreas three. Yes. First points of the game for Andreas. She's another one that can score in a hurry. They're just such a deep team. And with the addition of Cola from Montana State, you know, in her final season of eligibility, they're just, they're so deep. So many weapons. And they're nowhere near playing their best basketball. They're going to be a scary team. I, I would, especially the second half of the year, once they really get themselves going, I, I'd love to see what they can do at, at their full potential. Well, the Yellow Jackets were picked by coaches in the preseason, league coaches, to win the conference as Lindsay scores inside. And they're already off to a 2-0 start after beating the Alaska schools here in Billings last weekend. Absolutely, double-digit wins in both of those, too. Bad Bear battling down low against Brenna Lindsay. Both those players went to Billings Senior. What a pass, what a shot. How about it? Aspen Giese continues to play well in the second half offensively as she hits another three. 16-point lead. I believe that's the largest of the night for MSUB. They won the first meeting by 15. 80 to 65 that final. Lindsay now trying to match that three. It's no good. Rebound to Bad Bear. Nelson. Hands off to Giese who's bumped. That'll be a non-shooting foul. Nice pass though. Nice court awareness. I mean Nelson knew she was right there trailing. And Another great play. I thought Nelson was just going to turn and burn and take it to the hoop, but that was that was a great play by her. So Andrea subs back out. Caitlin Grossman in. Courtney Nelson to inbound. Posting up against Leckvold. Outside, Bad Bear for three. Leckvold comes away with it, and here come the Bears. Trying to cut in two, a 16-point deficit. Leckvold an NBA three, that's no good. Bad Bear with the rebound. Good job to keep her balance, and here comes Giese. She's 
Shayla Montague with it. Nelson freed up for a moment. Penetrates again. Rebound to Hagum. Well, if they want to build a run, now's the time to do it. Trailing by 16 with six minutes left in the game. That one deflected by Montague outside. Lindsay with position for a moment inside. Tied up then by Aspen Giese. And they're going to call a foul? Looks like it, yes. Got her on the arm. Unfortunate, but just absolute attack mentality on defense. I mean, it's sometimes it's a hazard of the trade, but I wouldn't change the way they play at all. That's the third foul tonight on Giese. First team foul, the fourth quarter, exactly six minutes left to play in this one. Morgan Baird now inside. Dominic Stevens back in the game. What a matchup this has been between these two tonight. And Bad Bears won it. Absolute blanket down low. That nearly deflected. Stevens can't get it. It's a shot clock violation. Good defense by uh, Yellow Jackets. Cole is going to take a seat with 19 points tonight to lead everybody at this point. Giese, who'd come on strong, but now sits on the bench, has 11. Danny's on with eight. That last defensive possession, Stevens had some position down low for a good four to five seconds and couldn't even get a shot away. Grossman now. <laughs> Off glass over Angie Kavanaugh. And the lead's 18 for MSU Billings. Caitlin Grossman's been one of those off the bench all year that they can turn to as well. Again, speaking of the depth of this team. Young player out of Billings West High. She's got sophomore eligibility this season. Steven scores. Zahn now controls it up top as we're under five minutes to play here in the game. Chloe Williams, been quiet offensively. Here she comes, driving to the basket. Off mark, tied up. They're gonna say jump ball and possession will stay with the Yellow Jackets. Kai Oliver, shaking her head, didn't disbelieve in something. She played good defense there and forced a shot. Off mark, it looks like they're going to sub Bad Bear back into the game after this media timeout as we had to quick break. Yellow Jackets, 58-42 over Rocky Mountain College with just 4.32 left on a Saturday night. And welcome back out of the media timeout with Yellow Jackets 58-42 with 4.32 left to play over Rocky Mountain College. Battling Bears on their way to sweeping this year's season series. Cole a bad bear, lefty won't go. Just that kind of a night for her, yet she still leads everybody with 19 points. She's made her own luck tonight. Those first looks that haven't gone, a lot of times she's made the second one go. Gracie Leckbold with it up on top for a moment. She leads Rocky with 15 points. That's deflected away as they try to go inside to Stevens. Zahn to the basket. 
Going to be a foul call on Lackfold, but she got an awful lot of ball there. It was a good defensive play. May have jammed a finger or was holding her wrist. Fouls number 14, Gracie Lackfold. In tears under the basket there. She's helped up by teammates. She's had a terrific night offensively and defensively. That one hurt. That one hurt. Yellow Jacket faithful and uh, players on both benches giving her a hand. One of those plays you hate to see. It's something every player does. It's a routine play and just with a nasty result there, unfortunately. Danny's on at the free throw line. First one's up and good. She's at nine points. This next one could put her into double digits if she connects. We're playing a little bit late tonight if you joined us late because we started a half hour late. The men's game, first of the doubleheader tonight, went to double overtime. Rockies men complete the season sweep. They did it 97-95, uh, hit a pair of free throws with 1.9 left in the second overtime. That one's stolen away. Another yellow jacket turnover forced. Bounce pass is on. Williams, good. Zahn put the brakes on there, and Stevens was right behind her. They checked to make sure each other okay, and they're back up. Three and a half to play at Alterowitz Gymnasium. A 19-point lead for the Yellow Jackets, their largest of the night. Morgan Baird backs her way down, defended by Deani Boyce. Rebound Williams. Still running are the Jackets. Another bounce, nice bounce pass, but oh, pretty. Boyce finds Williams, Bad Bear's there to clean it up. And a 21 point lead for MSUB. Kevin Wooden calls a timeout, so he can make a substitution. We'll keep it right here. Another rebound for Cola Bad Bear. Fourth, fifth offensive rebound of the game. She's been, she's collecting those first chance opportunities, grabbing rebounds, making the second one work. I've said it a ton of times so far tonight. She just keeps doing it, 21 points. And play before that, what a pass to find Chloe Williams. Nice, yeah. easy look for two. Yeah, they're an unselfish team, the Yellow Jackets. Again, this is Rocky's first action in a couple weeks, so they're just trying to kind of put the pieces together, shake off a little rust. And uh, if you didn't hear me mention it earlier, they, they play another exhibition game on Tuesday as they head to Boise State for a Mountain West Conference showdown. Yellow Jackets will make their way down to Florida for a pair of games starting a week from tonight. And then take the holiday break off. They're not back at home, the Yellow Jacket men or women, I believe, until January the 11th. Correct. A uh, long layoff here from Alterowitz, but heading to Florida, not a bad place to go in December. No, I'll take it, Daytona Beach. Back to action. We're under three minutes to play here in the game. Both teams with some substitutions. A lot of players getting time for both teams tonight. And a turnover on the Batland Bears, so possession back to MSUB with a 21-point lead. This point in the game, it really is just about staying healthy. We saw Leckvold, Gracie Leckvold, leave there with holding and uh, nursing her wrist just about a minute and a half ago. She's their scoring leader tonight for Rocky with 15 points. Andreas underneath, circus effort, no good. She slams down to the floor, and we go the other way with it. Outlet pass, three-pointer on the way, short. Rebound, Caitlin Grossman. It's tough. I mean, for coaches, obviously you want everybody to stay healthy in these situations, but for these players who are getting their a rare opportunity in the game, you, you still want to make the most of it. Two minutes to play tonight at Alterowitz Gymnasium. Shorty's house to the basket. Giese, nice. Lidon, she gets behind Brenna Lindsay and scores. That's 13 points for Giese tonight. She's second in scoring for the Yellow Jackets behind Bad Bear. Fantastic play, great work by her to find some space, great pass. Now Lindsay inside with a chance to return the favor. 
Stolen away by Williams. All alone and off the glass. There's a timeout on the floor. I'm not sure who took it. I think Kevin Wooden. Get some substitutions in, and he did. Layla Bauman comes into the game, the freshman from West High, along with Avery Burkhart, the freshman from Bozeman High. Bauman and Burkhart. Yellow Jackets, that last was their seventh steal. They've turned in 16 points on turnovers. Wow. That's a big difference maker tonight. Nearly another as Grossman deflects it. Lindsay inside. Grossman does get it this time. And Burkhart comes up with the rebound. Zahn ahead to Bauman. Grossman posting up inside, and they'll back it out for a moment. Under a minute to play here at Alterowitz Gymnasium. Williams to Grossman. Zahn knifing inside. Bauman to the basket. Another whistle. Layla Bauman will go to the free throw line for her first point attempts of the night. 67-42, Yellow Jackets by 25 with 44.1 left. Fans clearing out now. It was a packed house for the opener and for much of the first half of this game. Certainly was. Golf team was down there on the floor in Yellow Jacket jerseys. Love to see other teams sport. Were the golfers the getting rowdy? Was it like Ryder Cup action? Or? It, was, it was nice and loud down there. It was, it was a good time. All right. 27-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. Rocky looking to close the game with points. Lindsay posting up down low against Caitlin Grossman. They went head-to-head. -head, had some good battles between Billings Senior and Billings West. Lindsay at senior, Grossman at West. Grossman and Bauman both at West at that time. Hagum inside Lindsay with four on the shot clock and one. Nice power move to the basket for Brenna Lindsay. Hard work for that one. That's, a, that's an earned trip to the line for sure. Chance to complete the three-point play. Lindsay's off target, but rebounded by Rocky. Lindsay just calling for it down low. Double teamed for a moment. Wanted another crack at the basket. Instead, it's Oliver inside. Lindsay rebounds and a double-handed throw. It's like a soccer throw in. Off the glass and good. Brenna Lindsay with four points to close the game. In fact, looks like she'll score the final four points of this game. There it is. 69 to 46, Yellow Jackets hold Rocky Mountain College to 46 points. Batland Bears averaging 80 on the season, 81 in fact. What, a, what an effort defensively, and I know this is a team that prides themselves on how well they play defense, and they were fantastic tonight. Yeah, Yellow Jackets improved now to 10 and two on the season. Again, just an exhibition game for Rocky Mountain College. So the Batlin Bears are still 7-0 this year as they get set for that trip to, uh, to Boise on Tuesday to play Boise State. And then Rocky is off to Chandler, Arizona for a trio of games down in the desert. Should be a good time. Headed to semester break. Get to go to Florida, play some basketball. Doesn't sound too bad. They invite you to take that trip with them? I wish. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Well, they went to Hawaii earlier they this did. season, so they've got Hawaii and Florida before the first half, of, before they get through December, almost before the semester ends. I don't know if they've taken their finals yet or if they're still to come, but uh, that's, that's a pretty good road swing, Hawaii and Florida. I mean, it, it, logging lots of frequent flyer miles, but... Uh, Hawaii and Florida, that'll work. Certainly, that's that seems like a great, uh, some great road trips to take. I know they talk about the road being a grind, but maybe a little bit less when you go to places like that. Right, Hawaii and Daytona Beach. To recap the scoring leaders, Cola Bad Bear with 21, Aspen Geesey with 13, Danny Zahn had nine for the Yellow Jackets. The other way, Gracie Leckbold with 15, Kai Oliver finished with 11, and Brenna Lindsay scores eight. 
including the last four points of the night. Shooting wise, Rocky just 18 of 60. And uh, the Batman Bears finished with just 46 points. Yellow Jackets, Caitlin Grossman set to join us here as she'll take over the headset from Travis for a moment and the microphone as well. Hey, Caitlin, good to see you. Good to see you too. All right. I'll have you hold that. Go ahead. Can you get them both on? Are you comfortable? See, sometimes a headset can be a bit of a pro project. There you go. Hold that as close to your mouth as possible with the microphone and talk about tonight's win. You got some good minutes. How did it feel? It was good. I think it was a good team win. We had um, a few kind of crazy things happen in that first half, and I think that we did a good job sticking together and bouncing back from that. You and Brenda Lindsay going at it. It's like Billings West and Billings Senior all over again, right? Was that kind of fun? I mean, did you guys chat a little bit? Yeah, definitely a little bit of deja vu. She's a great player, so it was kind of fun to be matched up with her. Yeah, well, so are you, obviously. And uh, and the terrific win as you guys close it out. Uh, slow start, 27-24 at halftime. Did it feel like maybe coming off that game last night that maybe there just weren't fresh legs, or was it just uh, something that Rocky was doing to hold you guys to 27 points? Granted, you held them to just 24 in that first half. I think that every time that you have a back-to-back -back game, it um, is important that you just stay focused. Um, and so I think we did have a little bit of a slow start there, but we got refocused and then took off. So. You did, refocused in the third quarter, and it was a big one. Uh, what was said at halftime in the locker room? Anything to reignite you guys? Uh, you outscored them 21-14, to 14, but I think to start that quarter, it was a 13-4 to 4 run where you guys started to really open it up with double digits. We just really focused on halftime about making sure that our defense is what sparks our offense. Um, and so I think that we came out and played some good defense, which then led to offensive success. No doubt about it. All right, I'll, one more question, then I'll let you get out of here so you can, guys can get off to Florida. How good is that trip going to be? Pretty excited. We'll be done with school and have some nice warm weather, so it should be fun. So you've got finals coming up this week? Yep. And then, and then the trip. All right, well, stay eligible, right? Go down there and get some fun <laughs> minutes and enjoy a little bit of sand. Good. Caitlin Grossman, thank you for joining us tonight. I'll let you get out of here, and we'll bring in Coach Wooden here in just a moment. Again, a uh, terrific defensive, leading to offensive effort for the Yellow Jackets tonight as they win this one 69-46 to over Rocky Mountain College. And here comes the head coach, Kevin Wooden. I'll let you get the headphones on if you'd like. You don't need them if you can hear me. Yeah. You're the head coach. You don't need to do anything, man. Hey, good win tonight. Uh, talk about it. You guys pulled away there in the third quarter. You opened it with a 13-4 to run after just a three-point game at halftime. Yeah, I mean, first of all, give Rocky a lot of credit. They played a great first half. Uh, um, you know, I didn't help things out. I got a technical. I was a little frustrated on that call on Courtney. And uh, then, you know, that they shot some free throws right there. And um, But I thought our players kind of stuck in there. We didn't shoot the ball very well in the first half. I think uh, our offensive problems kind of leaked into our, our defense, but all overnight, I mean, for most of the night, I thought our defense was, was solid. Uh, we really worked hard, just even though we only had one day to prepare on their post players uh, who hurt us uh, last month in Rocky, and we guarded them much better to their strengths, and then we had good help there. Um, but uh, overall, uh, we got better in the second half. I think our depth was a factor, and we started to make some shots. You did. Aspen Giese, in particular, comes out firing in the third, and what a spark she gives you guys. It's such a deep team, and we talk about it each week. I know it may sound redundant, but anybody can go off like that to ignite you when you need it, and it was Giese tonight. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they uh, were uh, getting doubled, doubled in the post, and Diani and... Uh, Cola, uh, Cola, and 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 company. Uh, they got the ball out there in that extra pass. Uh, actually, Courtney. We posted Courtney a couple times, and she had uh, two passes out there yeah. for the three as well. So um, that that's critical there. Aspen, when she gets on fire, she really she could feel she can make anything and and stuff. And then we have a lot of players like that. But defensively, we settled in. We guarded Gracie better. Uh, Gracie Leckvold's just a very good player. Um, you know, her and Courtney are fun to watch when they compete against each other but because they're uh, very good friends, obviously, from Scobie. But, um, again, uh, I thought we played better as the game progressed. Um, it was a late start, you know, yeah. there. So the, game, the, the men's game going into the double OT and stuff. Well, thank you for not giving us double overtime. we got to get you home in time for bed, especially with that Florida trip coming up. Last question, talk about the two teams you'll see down there. 
Um, they're both teams from Texas. West Texas A&M uh, has been a you know a regional team for years. Uh, been in the lead eight just in the last couple of years. Uh, we play them first. Uh, you know, uh, I think there's they lost quite a bit from last year's team, but they always have a very talented team. I know they have a winning record right now. And then St. Mary's um, out of San Antonio. We're playing them as well. Haven't really checked on how they're doing yet. Uh, they used we used to play them uh, when we were in the Heartland for those two years. They were uh, one of the teams there. So their coaches changed, um, but looking forward to the trip and playing some uh, good basketball there before uh, Christmas break. All right, enjoy Daytona Beach once again. Your final tonight: MSUB 69-46 winners over Rocky. Yellow Jackets take the season sweep and pick up the win tonight, improving their record to 10 and 2. That'll do it on a Saturday night. We'll see you in January when the Yellow Jackets are back here on the 11th. Good night.